Hey alrighty folks, want to welcome you to another video from Yates Computers Tips and Reviews. Want to make sure everybody hits the subscribe, hit the bell, get all the updates, get notifications with all the new postings and all the other new videos. So for this video, I wanted to cover server. And I'm not talking about a rack mount server because most businesses that are dealing with rack mount servers, most people know how to deal with them. Most of them are the higher end IT professionals. But I might get around to that. But one subject that I see that nobody talks about is the standalone server. This is what I consider a standalone because it's a standing server. It doesn't mean it's an independent, the only thing you have. You can have multiple of these doing multiple tasks and have the same thing you have in a server rack. Differences is, is your, how you're going to keep them powered and keep them alive, how they're connected to the network, where they're positioned. Maybe you don't want a single room full of servers, but you have an accounting department and you have a little area over there where you can actually put in a server for your accounting. And then somewhere else in the building you have a research department where you can actually put a server in for research. And then you have management. You have a management server. <clears throat> Those are the servers that would be dedicated for them. Doesn't mean you can't still have a room with servers in it that these all talk to. These can all clone off and do whatever they need to with that server room. But it's sometimes more convenient and less redundancy and less wiring and a lot of other things to have multiple closets or rooms or whatever you want to call the area you put these in. Could be an accounting management office in a corner and you have a switch somewhere that you have all your lines that run off into accounting and some places have separate buildings for these things. They might be in like a shopping center or a multiplex area where there's multiple business areas and you have a certain area that's just accounting. You have a certain area that's just this. You have a certain area that's that. But then you actually have your business where you deal with your customers and your retail and all of this other stuff in another location. So it might not be just these big giant buildings and they have a whole floor, three floors or whatever. It might be separate locations. And of course, this might be also separate locations in different towns. <clears throat> and you get into networking, you get into VLAN, you get into all these other things that can go on. Um, all your network connections, how you get them to communicate together and all of these type of things that maybe it's a satellite office. You have your corporate office and then you have your satellite office. You might just need a standalone so you don't need a whole rack because <clears throat> this one's doing what it needs to and you're getting your other information from somewhere else. All of those videos, i got a lot of those videos all pre-done. I don't want to go through a lot of that same details again. So I wanted to touch base on this because I don't really hear too many people talk about this. They're talking about big full server racks. They're talking about big data solutions. They're not talking about your DNS servers, your all these other servers that go into that rack. They're not talking about virtual servers. They're not talking about a lot of things that you can do on this. Now, I brought up in the last video this is an actual server server. Showed the differences that you can use a little computer or a standard workstation computer as a server. You don't need a server based server as a server. Depends on what you need, how much you need, especially nowadays. One of the other variables you have in these nowadays is you need space as much space as you can get in a server most of the time because you're storing data here i've ordered two two terabyte drives this is when you get into raid configurations this is when you get into a lot of other things this is not only for business you might want this for home 
if you have a lot of documents, you have your taxes, you have all this stuff that goes on at home now that you're doing on your computer. They have things like NASes that store data and cloud backup and all of these type of things. But do you actually need all of those features? Do you need that thing running 24-7 so you can access it at any time? Do you need a, a simple data server where you can turn it on? Family photos, family videos, all of these things. Nowadays, you have all your old videos that you probably got digitally remastered, put on the digital forums, on the DVDs or downloads. You get all these pictures when you go to theme parks, all these things you download and you can't get them anymore. You might want a nice secure location to put those things in. Now, I'm not saying don't keep them in your computer. Yes, you want to keep your crucial items in your computer. But if you have something like this at home and you have where these drives copy each other, and of course you can get a lot bigger drives. Of course it's going to cost you more money. But a two terabyte drive that copies itself to another two terabyte drive is fairly large data for photos. But when you get into videos and other things, you might want to go larger. And of course, they make easily 50 terabyte drives and more. You get two of those that copy to each other. You can go radical. You can go RAID 5. Put five drives in there. You have 50 terabyte with four copies of your drive. So you want to research that data. You want to research how that all is done. Now, a lot of people go, well, that's a small spinning mechanical drive that's slow. That is true. If you watch the other video that I did, the other computer had a solid state drive in it. Don't forget, you can have multiple drives. Your OS could be on a separate drive than your storage data. This is another thing with servers too. I showed that other computer. I talked about how many drives I can put in it. I can add an add-on card. I've seen them where they go in there where they have about 20 SATA ports on it for SATA drives. Using dual mounts where I can put two SATAs in each one of those slots, I would easily get 20 drives in there. Knowing on how the motherboards can be configured, I'd have to check to see if that supports RAID 5. A lot of them report do, depending on the boards, you have to look at it. A lot of them support RAID 0, RAID 1, mirroring, striping. Those are great features. Striping, you stripe the two drives, you'd have four terabytes. Now, that doesn't mean you can't mirror that 4 terabyte. You have to check the motherboard and see what it specifies. A lot of server boards have all the RAID configurations in it, depending on what you want. I mentioned in the other one, a lot of servers now have the bays where you can put in the drives in the front, where you can remove them and put them back in and out. This can be... A backup solution. This can be a lot of things. This could be an overkill. This can be a lot of things that you don't really need. But if you get something at a good price and you look at something like this and you go, hey, this would actually be enough. And this system is not a Xeon system. This one's a dual core. Is what it's specified on the front. I'll be doing more work on this, do more videos on this server. I'll be doing a BIOS capture so you can see the BIOS of the server and the server board and how it's different compared to the other one that I did that was the little home computer workstation type. So you can see the few different configurations that I'm talking about. That'll come up in the future, as soon as I get this one, get the couple pieces I need to finish it. And I'll work on those videos. So, these are the key 
features I wanted to cover with the server. But again, like in the other video, just because this one's a server and the other one was not, does not mean the other one does not have a lot of the features you might be looking for. So instead of paying $8,000, $9,000 for a server or more, you might be able to get away with buying a $2,000 PC today and using that. Only problem is, is you've got to watch out for the power supplies. A lot of the pre-builds have pretty small power supplies. Right now I'm seeing where, because of video cards and other things, they're giving you options on a lot of computers to upgrade your power supplies because of the video cards. Not because of what you add in. They don't care about you adding in. They're like, nope, that's what you got. But they're worried about those video cards. <clears throat> but the funny thing is, is they're not giving you the right voltages to upgrade to go to a video card. So I wanted to cover that in here because if you're going to run like a 3090, and I know they're going to come out with new video cards pretty soon. They'll probably be out by the time <clears throat> you see this video, the newer information on what's coming out. They're recommending a 1,000 watt minimum. A 1,000 watt minimum because of that video card. This thing does not put out a 1,000 watts. The other one I had had a 450 in it. So it doesn't even really support those kind of video cards. You really shouldn't need that in a server, number one. You shouldn't be putting something like that in your server. But for servers, <laughs> that's kind of the one thing I wanted to point out. And for pre-builds. And I have all that information on power supply video. Go check all that out about the warnings and, you know, all the different little gadgets and gizmos and plugins and all of that type of stuff. So that's some of the factors you want to look at. Now, you don't have to buy a pre-built server. You can always make one of these. They sell the boards. You can buy the Xeon processors. <clears throat> you can get the heat sink. You can get all these components that are needed for the server. It's not like you have to buy this pre-done. You can build it just as you build a workstation computer. That way you can actually choose what case you want. How many hard drives? Maybe you want a modular. I found that I was really surprised is this one is sort of a modular power supply. It has three modulars in it that split out to the different things. I was kind of surprised with that. I had not seen that in one of these servers. This one's an older one. <clears throat> Most of them, it's all straight wired in. So I thought, oh wow, that's kind of surprising. So I wanted to point that out, that you can always change this part to something else if you needed to, but you're going to be paying a premium for this unit. So if you know how to build them, you know what you want, go to a shop, someone who can build it for you, you don't have to buy a pre-built. But these are the categories and things I don't hear anybody talk about, that you don't have to buy a server. Oh, I need to go buy this $12,000 server and have it shipped to me. No. You can get the motherboard. You can get the CPU. You can get the heat sink. You can get your case. You can get your power supply. The same as home computers. These are some of these areas that I find that people don't talk about, so I wanted to bring this up. Because if you're a small business and other things, you might have someone that come out take care of your network, take care of stuff that pitches you, you need a server, you need a server upgrade, you need this, you need that, buy this unit. Not, we can put this together, not we can upgrade what you got. Problem with upgrading you got is downtime. Because then they have to take out what you got, work on what you got, and put it back in. Now, if you're closed, Weekends, three-day week, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, something like that. Problem with weekends is most shop people won't work weekends. 
they're closed or they're, it's the busiest time. So it kind of hurts you as a business. So a lot of times you'll have to buy new. It's recommended to buy new, not to upgrade. Because you have lifespans on everything when you come to servers. And it should be about, I think it's five to six years, you want to change them. Because then you get to points of failure where things start to fail and die. This is your server you need to have running. This has got all your data. So this is kind of a higher priority of changing out than workstations. So that's one thing you got to kind of remember with servers. This isn't a buy it and leave it there for 20 years. I mean, you probably could, but if something burns out or something shorts out, then this thing's 15 years old like this thing is, it's old. Then you got to hunt for parts. Then you got to hunt for stuff. So if it takes you a week to get a motherboard, you're down for a week. So there's a cost of being downtime and all of those type of things that you're going to have issues with. Now, like I mentioned, you have to find a board for it. And I mentioned a week. And people probably, oh my God, a week. Oh, well, it won't take that long. Well, you shop around. That's a day or two. It has to come to you. That's another day or two. Then your technician or whoever has to take your server and work on it. Get it repaired, get it back up and running, and get it back to you. So these are those factors that I wanted to put out there. Now, you bought that board, it doesn't necessarily mean that board's good. Maybe there's an issue with that board you bought that the person didn't know about, the seller didn't know about. Because it's a used board, they took it out of another server that's been running. Then you have to go through all the process again. So, this is one of those things that you kind of need to be updated on. I don't hear a lot of people talk about that. So, I wanted to tell people about that when it comes to the server. And it doesn't matter if it's this, the little one, the other one that I had up here on the other video. It doesn't matter. If you're using it as a server... That is your most important asset you want to protect. So you want to change those out on a frequent basis. Not to mention, in five or six years, your nice killer CPU you had, go back, do the research from today's CPUs to what they had five years ago, and look at the difference. Because I'm sure the trend's still going to go up. It might not be as radical as it is now because it seems like they're getting stuck on a plateau, but at some time they're going to work their way around it somehow and get CPUs to go up. So that's another factor of changing these things. You get the performance. Look at these. Two SATA. SATA drives and the M.2 drives. M.2 drives are fairly small right now. SATA SATA drives are fairly small. I believe I saw they just had an 8 terabyte come out. So these are things that might come into play five years from now. You might end up having a server with a SATA drive. SATA SATA drive, SATA drives as backup, as your data, as your D drive, E drive, E, F, G, whatever you want to do them as, as your, your remote files, all those shared documents, all that stuff can be on those. You have your solid state as your OS, your key programs <clears throat> are all in there, so it's quick. Some of them have flashcards you can put in them. Some of them actually have MCOT 2 drives on the board that you can load your OS to. So that's kind of a different variable now than these kind of drives or actual server drives. 
there's different drives for certain servers. You used to have SCSI, you used to have all these other kind of drives that were server based. So I think it's a SCSI, SCSI SATA or something like that. There's a different drive for servers. There's a couple different drives. I believe there's a solid state now for server. I don't know much about them, how they run, but uh, we'll figure that out here in the next couple years when everybody starts adopting that stuff and that type of stuff. But again, it comes down to size again. Depends on what kind of data. Now, if you're running virtual servers and all of that type of stuff, multiple things on there, yeah, it makes really sense to have a solid state drive on there. If you're just running a data center at your work, not even, I won't say data center, data center is different. A sharing device where you share your data. You can probably get away with just running those. You don't need a solid state. But with solid states being the price they are, and you know, and this is only going to be there for about five years, why wouldn't you? So these are some of those kind of variables that come into play. So I really wanted to show the front, how plain and bland the front is on a server. Some of them, like I said, you can actually put in bays here to slide in drives. They've had them out for 20 years, 30 years, where you can put that in. I think I threw all mine away because I didn't think I was going to need them anymore. But you put it in, screw it in, and it has them out. You could slide in a drive. You don't even need a CD-ROM anymore. What we have is what I have is an external USB. Because why do I need to have a U this in here? What am I going to use this for? Installation. Take this out, plug that in, <clears throat> do what I need to do, take it out. When I need to go to another server, I take it with me. I don't need to have 50 of these in servers. Because when this fails, then you got to open it up, take it out, service it, work on it, blah, 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 blah. This fails, I throw it away, I buy another one for 50 bucks, and I'm good. Not to mention, this kind of drive is usually different than this style drive. This is the smaller drive that's in laptops and other things. They're starting to implement these in servers and computers now. You'll see them, the smaller ones. These big old-fashioned ones are going away. So, this is one of the other factors I wanted to bring up. That you don't need some of these things. But yeah, you can spend the money and go out and buy one and plug it in and use up one of your ports and power and all of that type of stuff. And you can use it. Yeah. Maybe you need to burn a lot of data. Maybe for security reasons, you don't want people burning data from your server. Yank that sucker out. Don't put one in. Unplug it in the inside. There's little things that I wanted to touch base on the server, security-wise. So you have these features in this unit. Of course, you have them in the little units. My little unit here. You have the same kind of features. But I wanted to go through this and show these because these are things I don't hear anybody talking about. So, we go to the back. And this is the really funny, funny part that I brought up before in one of my videos. Are these little things. Most people probably don't know what they are anymore. That's for your keyboard and mouse. <clears throat> What's funny is certain... Devices still use these. If you have a screen that changes between different servers and a server rack, it can use these. Most of them have USB 
but some devices prefer this. Some people still prefer this because of latency. Keyboard and mouse latency through USB is kind of an issue. So some people don't like it. Some hardcore gaming machines, you will see, have these. There's a reason why. The gamers are really what brought up this issue again. Because they're trying to play gaming and they're trying to move and, well, they can't figure it out. They have this beast of a machine. They spent $5,000, $6,000 building this machine. And they can't figure it out. These are dedicated ports to the motherboard. There's people out there that have videos on this in detail. So you'll find on servers, and the really old servers have the big plug for the keyboard. So wanted to touch base on the back of the server. The differences on the ports that might be on there. That is really one of the swaying points between workstation, home computer, and what's on the back is really one of your swaying points. <clears throat> of course, the other one I brought up with this one is this is full width. This is a mini. So you need to have the different back plate different size card so depending on what you want to do if you need a four port nick odds are it won't fit in that it'll have to be in a full plate so that's one of the variables but now that doesn't mean you have to have a server you can have like the other one i showed so i wanted to go through this now one of the key factors with servers that I haven't really seen too much of in home might be just as simple as getting a server case, putting home stuff in it, is how many power supplies. I The one server I got that was really, with the lead base, was really interesting, is it had this unit, but underneath, it was probably about like this big. It had another unit attached to it. And it had one power plug. It was a dual power supply in one. So if this unit top failed, it would run off the bottom unit. It was really kind of an interesting thing. And that's the only reason I kind of kept it. Because of that features and it was kind of nice. I haven't really seen that on anything else yet. Most of them have two independent power supplies with two separate plugs. That is actually a little bit better because if this plug unit goes out, that actually attaches to both, then they both go dead. That way you have an independent separate power supply. Not to mention wherever this wire runs and plugs into, if that goes down, you go down. If you have two wires that run into two different power sources, if one goes down and one stays up, you're up. So, that's something you might want to consider when you're in a server-based unit. Even home unit size, whatever. If it's a standard power supply, depending on the case, shop around for your cases, see if it takes two power supplies. Figure out how they attach the motherboard I think has to support it but of course if you're building a server and you planning for the dual power supplies you'll get the motherboard that has what you need so that's things I don't hear anybody saying I don't hear anybody telling people that to be aware of these factors so this is really what this video was about was a quick showing of the more features on the external of the server. I'll be doing some more on the internal. Now, I mentioned you can add USB cards, add USB ports. You can use USB hard drives. You don't have to use internal. 
So that's another factor. You can do a smaller unit like that, put drives on the top, have them USB just sitting there, and you can do whatever you want off of those drives. Internally, works better for your RAID and everything else. Your RAID controller and all of that is internal. If you just want a standard spot to save data, do what you need to. Here's one thing that you can do. Is you put those two drives inside, stripe them, mirror them, do whatever you want. These drives on the outside that people store their data to, accounting, finance, whatever, backup drives. They will back, you can have them back up those USB drives to those drives. And if you mirror them, you have redundancy. So you have your backup that's redundancy, but, 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 that's not a proper safe backup. You still need to make a backup of that data and put it in an other source away from your server. I want to touch base on that. Now, you could do that and have another server in a corporate building have that backup. Can back up your system, your backup, your boot disk OS partition off into the cloud, off to another building's remote location. We have a proper backup. <coughs> then you actually have four copies of your data. You have your live copy that is active. You have your backup, your redundancy, your backup of your whole unit. Now you can actually do a whole backup of the unit with your USB drives and all of that, but that's going to be a lot of data. When you already have your backup performing here, you just want to make sure you have that in your other location. So that could be as simple as a, v, a private network, backing it up to an additional USB drive. You plug it in the front, do your backup once a month, back up all your data, you have your redundancy, you have your originals, and you just, that's your safe haven. So you have these little features you can do. I wanted to touch base on that on the server. Because now we're talking about a server platform. This is really important to your business, to your home. If you have 50 years of family videos and photos and all of that type of stuff on here, you want to make sure you have all those backed up. You want to make sure you have all those things done. All these fires and power lines down and power being shut off on people's homes and power surges and all these type of things. You want to make sure that data is protected. You might have it in your original computer. You might have it in here stored and you turn this thing off and it just sits there until you need to transfer data over, do your backups, do whatever you need to. Turn it back off and then major power surge comes through and blows out your your units whatever can happen motherboard power supply cpu hopefully you have your data protected you just don't know scenarios so this is where a server is important to make sure you have your backup protected as well i know a lot of people are like oh, i'm running rate five i'm good you want to make sure you still have your backup. You still want to make sure it's in an outside. You don't want to do a backup and just set it on top of your computer. At least put it in another room, put it somewhere. Now they talk about watching the fires that were going on. Make sure you have all your information in a safe spot in a box or whatever. So if you have to evacuate, you can grab your box and go. And what they're talking about is your backups. They're not talking about having this sitting in a box by the front door. They're talking about having a USB drive with your backups. So I wanted to elaborate on that because I thought that was funny. Because I hear I didn't have time to grab my computer. Did you not have a backup on a USB drive? Or, you know, why didn't you have your backup? You could just grab one single drive with all your data. 
you might lose some of your most recent, but at least you're going to have your 20 years of the backup. So this is one of those things that I wanted to point out, because if you're in a business and you got to go, you got to get out. Have that, of course, in a secure location. If you have a safe or vault or something in your business, you put it in there so you have your safe, secure area. Not to mention a lot of safes and vaults can be fireproof. That's a good protection. You may not need to grab it, but grab it, get your stuff, get out. You have what you need. Because as long as you have your data, one of the other issues is, is if this unit got destroyed, your backups are only so good. Because odds are you're not going to get the same unit, you're going to get a new unit. And you're going to restore your data that you had onto the new unit. You're going to have your new OS, your new hardware, your new everything else. So this thing, you really want to lug this big beast out to your vehicle as you're running or do you want to carry a little USB drive or something else with your data on it? So, that's kind of the things I wanted to bring up with the servers. Not to mention it'll be all wired in that you have to unhook everything and then you have to hook it all back up when you're done. So, wanted to go through some of this when it comes to the server. So, I think I'll wrap this one up. Get ready for the next one. So, everybody be aware of the server already make sure you hit the subscribe the bell let everybody know i'm out there thank you